Greetings comrades, for this video I would like to once again delve back into the Slavonic lands of Eastern Europe, but don't let the atmospheric folk music fool you. Frankly, it's just an excuse to use the music of a band I like as the soundtrack for this. However, in reality we will be talking about much more modern topics. That's right, we'll be exploring the games industry of Europe's East. In order to make this subject easier to understand for you and less difficult to analyze for me, I've decided to split Eastern Europe into two main groups. The first area is made up of Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. They are the furthest east in the region, often grouped together into the Commonwealth of Independent States, even though Ukraine is technically not a member but an associate state. Here it is the 1C company that dominates the publishing market. The second zone consists of Poland, Czechia, Slovakia and Hungary. This is the part that is geographically and politically more western, plus all four of them are members of the EU and NATO. CD Projekt is a key player in games distribution here. The reason why I'm skipping the Baltics and the Balkans is not because no games are made there as that is entirely untrue, but simply due to the fact that I'm less familiar with them and they are also more to the north and south than the core of Eastern Europe. We will focus on gaming at home rather than arcades. To comprehend this region with all its peculiar specifics, we must go back in time to the second half of the 20th century. The Soviet Union is still around, Russia, Belarus and Ukraine are all key participants. Czechoslovakia is a thing, while Poland and Hungary are both so-called People's Republics. All three countries are satellite states of the USSR. I should point out straight away that although contrary to popular belief they did exist, copyright and similar laws worked quite differently in the Eastern Bloc. Since gaining access to products and technologies made in the West was hard because of the Iron Curtain, most of that stuff was obtained through less than legal methods. Without any proper anti-piracy laws, this carried on well into the 90s, long after the collapse of pseudo-socialism in Eastern Europe. It doesn't help that wages and living standards in the East continue to immensely lag behind their Western counterparts to this day. This meant that if someone wanted to play a game or try some applications, they would most likely pirate them. The positive effect of that was the huge influx of experienced designers onto the software market. Whereas in Western Europe and Northern America you would be expected to pay licensing fees for things like Photoshop or 3D Max, in Poland and Russia it was for a long time totally acceptable to download illegal copies and learn to use these programs that way. This was common practice even among businesses. It's one of the reasons for the continued popularity of PC gaming in the East as it's a significantly more open platform than any console out there with cheaper prices for games and much greater potential for piracy. So the project's history really nicely reflects the oddities of my region in this regard. Its founders, Marcin Iwinski and Michał Kiczynski, before moving on to importing CD-ROMs from the US, started their careers in high school by selling cracked copies of Western video games at a marketplace in Poland's capital city Warszawa, known as Warsaw in English. Again, this was completely fine until the mid-2000s when Polish laws changed and the police started cracking down on these street markets. I remember when I was a kid before we migrated, you would see lots of stands with tons of pirated movies, music and games on sale. In fact, before the National Stadium was built in its place as a venue for Euro 2012, the old Varsovian Stadium located there was home to Jarmark Europa, Europe's largest bazaar, or flea market. Apart from clothes, shoes, rugs, food and loads of water crap, it was easy to find CDs and DVDs there too. So we covered the beginnings of the games industry in Eastern Europe, but when did people actually start making their own games over there? Well, one of the earlier of such products made in Russia came out in 1992, it was called Color Lines. However, it's basically a copy of Namco's Golly Ghost, transferred from the arcade to home systems. A more original Russian production from the same year is Short Line, a game where the player runs his or her own railway company. Next up is Priklucenia Buratina, The Adventures of Buratino, a graphic adventure game from 93 starring Buratino, who is basically the Russian rendition of Pinocchio. 1994 brought us Shariki, The Balls, a puzzle game that was actually quite influential, causing many titles that tried to copy its mechanics to be made. With 95 came a considerably more complex product, namely Total Control, real-time strategy in a science fiction setting. 1997 saw the release of Park and Hronika Imperi, a space in which later spawned a sequel. In 1998 there was the launch of Award de Pichat Tainé, Published in English as Rage of Mages, it was a mix of role-playing and strategy elements. It started a franchise that culminated in the release of an MMO called Allods Online. 
Finally, for the early days of Russian game development, Il Dva Sturmovik came out in 2001, a flight sim that kicked off a whole series, which is still going strong today. Although there were translations and ports of foreign games made in Poland before this, the first truly original Polish game I could find is Pushka Pandory, or Pandora's Box, a 1986 text-based title set in a post-apocalyptic South America. Actually, I was surprised to find that a number of games were developed in Poland during the 80s, though some of them weren't even intended for a Polish market. In 1989 came out perhaps one of the more ambitious Polish productions back then, namely another text-based game called Musk Processor, this time with some fancy graphics. It was also one of the first games released in the country with a proper box and packaging. But now I'd like to skip forward to the second half of the 90s, when some of the more popular products were released. 1996 brought Polania, which I already covered on this channel in the past, an RTS that had you take control of the real world Polans, one of the Slavic tribes that would later band together to form Poland. The year after that arrived Earth 2140, another real time strategy, but this time with a sci fi flavor. A number of sequels were made as well. In 99, we saw the launch of Gorki 17, known as Odium in North America. A tactical RPG that placed us in the boots of a team of NATO troops exploring a former Soviet military base. Okay, that's enough about the pioneers of Eastern European games design, especially since the most famous titles from the region that achieved the measure of success outside their homeland didn't start appearing until the mid 2000s. Russia still rules the skies with its Il Dva Sturmovik franchise and the more recent War Thunder, a vehicular combat MMO with a focus on World War II era combined arms battles. Poland took the industry by storm with its Viedźmin or The Witcher trilogy, especially the third installment, and is known for its Call of War S series too. Ukraine is beloved by many for bringing us an adaptation of Dmitry Gulhovsky's novel in addition to Stalker, though some of you may remember Cryostasis from 2009. Czechia's first two Mafia games are remembered extremely fondly since they are more realistic and atmospheric than GTA and its numerous clones. Belarus is unexpectedly successful on the free-to-play arena with its armored combat in World of Tanks. Slovakia's development scene is much smaller than that of its peers, so one of its larger productions is the Kabbalah's Hunting series. Likewise, Hungary is not known for loads of games, but Crytek's Budapest subsidiary did create Crisis Warhead. When gamers from the West look at the likes of The Witcher 3 and Metro, they are often stunned at the amount of polish and the quality of the graphics that can be seen when playing these games. They sometimes wonder, how is it possible that these smaller Eastern European studios, often working under worse conditions and always on just a fraction of the budget that a typical AAA production would receive in Western Europe or the US, make such beautiful and unique games? The answer is simpler than you might think. First of all, think of all the experience that a Polish or Ukrainian developer may have from working on pirated software alone. Then take note of the fact that both CD Projekt and Foray Games relied on money provided either by distributors or publishers from wealthier countries. Remember that the Polish Złoty and particularly the Ukrainian Hryvnia are both very weak currencies in comparison to the US dollar, the British pound or the euro. This means that each sum of finances that is sent gets multiplied by a certain amount. Moreover, as I pointed out earlier, wages and living conditions in the East are much lower than in the West, which boils down to each company being able to pay its workers less. In this way, the games industry in Eastern Europe is more exploitative by default. Marcin Niewinski, one of the aforementioned founders of CD Projekt, who jokingly referred to his native land of Poland as an Eastern European jungle, once said in an interview about developers from our region that we bring something new to the table, a breath of fresh air, creativity. And I think there is plenty of truth in that as well. Video games are an industry that has been dominated by North America and East Asia for decades, so it's wonderful to see more diversity in its products. More importantly for me personally, it is amazing to experience things like Vyajmin or Stalker, games that, while of course aiming for an international audience, were also designed with people like me in mind, people that grew up in a slightly different place than most are used to seeing on TV or in AAA productions. I hope you've enjoyed this brief trip into the world of Eastern European gaming as much as I have. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and please consider supporting me on Patreon so together we can realize some ambitious projects in the future. On a closing note, I'd like to turn your attention to this list I created ages ago on GOG.com, featuring all the Polish games currently available there. They are all DRM3 spanning from classics like Gorki 17 to the huge Witcher trilogy. I have been thinking of making another list like this for all the Eastern European products on the site, but frankly it's been a real pain keeping this one updated as it is. Thanks for watching and good hunting stalkers!